So if you have questions about anything that you want to put in your illustration of your character, you can always reference. I don't know if you guys have YouTube blocked, but you can ask your learning coach to help you find a video that you can use to reference Im um, images. So say I wanted to do my character as like a grizzly bear, then I could find videos of grizzly bears and I can pause it on different um, images so I can see different angles of their face or their body so that I can draw them accurately in my squares. So I'm going to start out, you know what, I think I'm going to make my character a bear. So I actually have a YouTube video pulled up here and it's already paused and I'm just going to click through and I'm going to find a picture of the bear that I want to use. So here I'm going to start with my bear. So that's one angle. And keep going till I see another angle of him. Oh, here is from the side. So that's helpful. Let me keep going. So now I have my four bear perspectives drawn and to make it look like the same character in each picture, I'm going to give him some accessories. So some human clothing. And I'm not going to draw any backgrounds or anything yet. I just drew this in here because this is the position he was in against the tree. So I'll add more details to this later, but I just wanted to have a little bit of the outline from my reference photo to start out with. But other than that, I don't want really any background details because that's what we're going to work on next week. So for today, we're just going to think about how we want to dress our character. So I want to give him a little crown. So I'm going to make it curved and tall. I'll add a nice scarf, a wintry scarf. I'm going to have it go up curved to show it's kind of wrapped in thick. So now I've got my scarf and my hat, my crown, on my bear. So then I can go back and add little details if I need to. But focusing on your character's details. No colors yet. If it helps, you can record the pictures that you used for your references. And I'm going to show you how to do that in just a second. Okay, so say that you want to draw this monkey at this angle and you want to screenshot this. Oops. You want to screenshot that so then you can use it to draw and maybe you want to save it so that you can look at it next week when you're doing the backgrounds and adding colors and stuff. So what you want to do is you're going to go in this bottom left corner where it says type here to search and you're going to search for snip and it should come up. S N I P and it shows you snip and sketch. You could use either the snipping tool or snip and sketch. Either of them work exactly the same way. So I'm going to click snip and sketch and I'm going to click new. Once I do that, my screen turns gray and see this little crosshair, that little plus sign. I'm going to go to the top left of the picture I want to take a picture of. 
and click and hold the mouse down and drag my finger so that it goes or drag my index finger while I'm holding it down with my thumb. I'm going to select the whole screen that I want to take a picture of. Once I do that, it should come up in a new screen. Here it goes. And then I'm going to save this. If it doesn't come out right the first time, you can just click new and do it again. So I'm just gonna save it to my desktop so I can find it easily. And I'm gonna retitle it. Oh my goodness. Monkey one. Okay, and then I'll number them one, two, three, and four. So then I'm going to keep this in the background and this is still on pause. I'm gonna slide this or you can play and pause it again until you find this is the next picture that you wanna pause it on. Here we go. So I'll just press play and I can pause it. There you go, there's another view. So now I'll go back to my snipping tool window, click new, and it'll do the same thing again. So then I can take a screen grab of that picture. So I just click it with my thumb and hold my thumb down. And then I slide the mouse to the right and then click it. If you're using a mouse, you just hold the mouse down and drag it. I'm using the trackpad. So now I've got that one. So now I can save that by clicking up here on the floppy disk, or you can press the control S keys together. So hold the control key down and then press S. And that will also bring up the screen where you save it. I'm gonna click desktop, so that's where it saves. And then I'll click, oops, monkey two. So I'll go back here to my video, press play. So I didn't get a back view of him. So I could try to imagine what it would look like, or I could try to find another reference video. You're welcome to use your imagination too and try to be creative. So here's how I did, that's how I did the two screen grabs. So just to clarify, you can also, once you search for it, type in snip, and then you'll see snip and sketch. When this window comes up, if you go over here and click on that little, um, almost like a V, carrot, click on that, and then it will say, instead of unpin, because I have it right here in my taskbar, it'll say pin to taskbar, and then it'll always be right down here. So you want to pin to taskbar and then you'll click that. And then instead of having to search it in the bottom left right here, it'll just be right here. So if I click out of that, you know, if I close this, you'll see that little icon with the scissors in the circle. So that's how I open it now. So I could just do click new and then it's right there when I want it. So you guys can use this as a tool for a whole bunch of things, taking notes or anything that you wanna take a screenshot of and then you can save it to your desktop. So now you can see I've got monkey one up here, monkey two over here. You can make a folder for it or you can just have them right on your desktop until you're done with your project. So that's that. Now, if you have extra time and you're feeling really antsy, that you can't do the background or color, as I've seen a few students who already have a lot of it completed from last week. So I know that you guys sometimes are really anxious to finish your project. So since we did it, we're not going over the backgrounds and the coloring today. What I'm gonna say is choose one and draw it big on another piece of paper. And then you can, you can do your concept for, um, your colors and stuff. So I'm just going to copy what I did for the bear in the first version, a little bit kind of roughly. I'm going to spend too much time on this one because it's just my concept design. Um, got his nose.
So this is a really rough sketch and you can't really see my colors that well. So now I can kind of plan better what colors I want to use. Like, do I want to try something brighter or did I really want it to be pink? I really wanted it to be more of like a taupe color. So maybe that. So you can just test out your colors and just kind of practice first so that you kind of have a plan of how to color your drawings next week. And you can also use paints. You don't have to use crayons. So this could just be kind of a test sheet to help you visualize. And you can even think about like what colors might be nice to see in the background. So if you're really anxious about completing this, leave this as is and you can do something like this just on a side piece of paper. The other thing you're allowed to do if you would like to is if you have a skinny permanent marker and you'd like to outline it, you may do so. All right, so now I've outlined pretty much all my lines. So now I can take my eraser and erase all my pencil marks. So that would be the final step of what you could do. And if you want, you can use a ruler and you can just mark your creases if you'd like. But don't do any background drawings or coloring yet until next week. Okay, so that's that's it. So this should be step two, week two. And next week we're meeting on Tuesday, and you'll be working on the coloring of all of them. So if you want to get a head start, you can do something like this. Otherwise, just leave it like that. All right, guys. Good luck.